Dajja hao, uh, guten Morgen, uh, marhaban, privyet, saluton, salwete, kairete, kalimera, and whatever. Uh, I am Ches Coriale. Um, I am one of the co-organizers of this event uh, since the first, very first edition. I have, I don't know if you can see my t-shirt from the first year, 2014 in Berlin, uh, and I am also um, representative of the World Esperanto Association at the United Nations. So today I'm going to present um, a project that is called Communicon, an iconic language beyond emoji for the social networks of the future. I apologize because uh, my fans like that I speak several languages in the in the talks, um, but today I'm going to speak only English because uh, of the online connection. I cannot have a di direct interaction uh, with you guys. So, um, as introduction, we chose this uh, sentence from Ludwig Wittgenstein. We will see it later. So, a short summary. Uh, first of all, what is Communicon? Uh, I'll talk the, about the team, the history of visual languages, the applications of this concept, guidelines and philosophy of the project, examples of iconic sentences, video of the app, and conclusion. So, Communicon is a project uh, dealing with iconic communication. Uh, we are developing Econ, an international visual language through which a lot of sentences and concepts can be expressed only through icons, going one step beyond emoji. Today, emoji are used by 2.5 billion people, while English and Chinese are used by far fewer people. But emoji are not a language. Many people love emoji and try to create sentences only in emoji, but the result is something often not understandable. So we thought to create a linguistic framework that allows to recreate our natural languages in icons. How to express words such as he, she, always, cousin, language, future, past, through, season, somewhere, etc. We have created all these words in icons and many more, taking inspiration from Egyptian hieroglyphs, Chinese characters, road signs, and many other visual languages. This concept has applications much further than chats and fun communication. It can help people that cannot read, such as children, migrants, illiterates, persons with disabilities, and more, to understand more easily written messages in languages that they understand very little or not at all. For, examples, for example, in uh, airports, hospitals, websites, street signs, press, etc. Many projects of visual languages have already had significant success in certain areas or his, uh, historical periods. Today, we can go back to the origins of writing, but with the power of computers and internet, reproducing images with a speed and precision that was inconceivable when writing was born. The philosopher Bernard de Chartres said, Sumus nani gigantum humeris incidentes. So we are dwarfs standing on the shoulders of giants. The giants on which communicon rests are linguists, philosophers, and mathematicians, such as Leibniz, Newton, Descartes, Mersenne, Kircher, Zamenhof, Frege, Peano, De Saussure, Ben Yehuda, Neurath, Bliss, and many others, who have dreamed of an international 
um, sorry, <laughs> of an international language uh, for humanity or for specific purposes. In order to connect not Russians with Malawians, not Australians with Mexicans, but people with people. Now I will show um, a short video that introduces uh, three use cases. So we begin with this Die Grenzen meiner Sprache bedeuten die Grenzen meiner Welt uh, by Ludwig Wittgenstein. We have translated it into icons. And so first use case, two brothers that like to chat using emojis, but cannot, um, and they must use some words. They cannot write everything in emoji, but we econ, they can chat using only emoji. They write in, uh, in English, for example, in this case. And then the system proposes some translations. Uh, second uh, use case, video game, online video game, a child in China and a child in India. They both are monolingual. The Indian guy knows that there is a monster on the right, so says, danger, stop, don't enter. But the, the Chinese uh, child doesn't understand, say, shama. And so he enters and his avatar is dead. But with Econ, the Indian guy can add at least an iconic translation, stop, don't enter, and the Chinese child understands, and so he's saved. Third use case in a train, four languages on a sign, she doesn't understand. With Egon, she understands. So Econ is a full iconic language, easy, consistent, precise, international, cross-cultural, and fun. So we have modified the original Wittgenstein sentence, and we say, when your language goes beyond your limits, your world goes beyond your limits. If you want to know more, please visit communicon.com. And so this is the introduction video. Now uh, I will uh, present the team uh, quickly. You might recognize some uh, polyglots of our polyglot community. Um, in the team, uh, we have several sub teams, let's say, so the management team, uh, the linguistic team, you see here Andre Muller, uh, the marketing, development team, uh, graphic designers, uh, some partners, and then advisors like Eugenio Grappa and Dimitrios Polychronopoulos that uh, you might know. And among our academic recommendations, we also have uh, Michele Gazzola and Federico Gobbo that you might might know. Um, so these are the sub teams, and so this is what we have currently, and also what we are looking for to increase uh, the team. Last year, I presented with Andre Muller um, from hieroglyphs to emoji: the fantastic history of visual languages. Um, you can find it on my YouTube channel if you look for Cesco Reale. Uh, you can find this one and also another one. This is this one were multilingual, and another one uh, that was in Italian that I did in October in uh, Ferrara in a language event uh, Uno Zwei Three, uh, organized by Anna Beven that you also might know. Um, so here I will just uh, show an excerpt, a short summary. So we, we talked about the ancient visual languages, uh, such as, for example, uh, Egyptian hieroglyphs and Chinese. Uh, we talked about the philosophical ideas, and then we showed some um, modern projects like 
transcendent algebra, bliss symbols, um, locos, Yerkish, augmented even alternative communication. There are many projects here. Pictoperanto, emoticons, emoji, elephant's memory, slango, VCM, an iconic language for medicine, Iconji, Dishu, and Citalen Citalen for Tokipona. So again, this was just a very short summary. Uh, if you are interested, I invite you to go to my YouTube channel and to find the whole presentation there. So let's see some applications of visual languages. I have talked uh, previously very quickly about augmentative and alternative communication. These are systems of communication for disabled people. Um, this is an example. Of course, these are, are meant for uh, basic communication, but there are people that are have linguistic um, capabilities, skills, but they cannot use any, any uh, oral or written language, but they can uh, communicate through visual languages. Then we have pictograms for tourism. For example, here I show Je Palimo. Uh, it's a, a guide in which you can find several um, situations for tourism, like um, uh, hotel, restaurant, uh, airport, and in icons you can try to express yourself. And um, icon speak also is a t-shirt meant um, with the same uh, goal. Chat applications for smartphones. Um, for example, um, Line is um, relies heavily on uh, stickers and icons. And IKEA uh, produced uh, an iconic chat to, through which you can discuss uh, mainly about IKEA products, of, of course. So they, they created many, many icons for IKEA products, not only, but mainly. Uh, internet sites, uh, for example, The Guardian um, uh, tried several times to uh, translate into emoji. Um, in this case, it's a speech uh, of Obama. Uh, of course, uh, the result sometimes is very um, Anglo-centric, at least in this case. Uh, you can see here, for example, I want to be, uh, of course, it's, uh, well, it's, it's made to, to joke, but, uh, of course, this is understandable only if you understand English. Um, then United Nations also have produced a series of pictograms. Um, and also language learning apps, uh, such as Utalk and Bubble, often use uh, images to ease language learning. So let's see econ, uh, some guidelines and criteria. Um, as you can see, I pronounce econ because um, the written in this way comes from Esperanto, but the, the root is a Greek root and the pronunciation is econ, not icon. And also because communicon, you don't say common icon, so that's why I pronounce, pronounce uh, like that. So, econ, uh, the aim is to be international, so understandable across different countries and languages. For example, you can recognize here the symbol of, of peace. On the right side, <clears throat> this is the laurel, for example, used by United Nations. This is a dove um, proposed by Picasso. This is a symbol that was born in an anti-nuclear movement. Uh, they became uh, quite internationally used. Uh, this on the, on the left is a bit less international. It's uh, known in the Buddhistic uh, uh, environment. So... Uh, 
uh, also language independent international means also uh, cross cultural and language independent then inclusive as much as possible respectful of diversity for example the, here you can see uh, the skin colors that whatsapp <clears throat> added and here you can see some of the possible icons for different genders not, not only uh, female and male uh, but also by gender uh, a gender etc there are many more this is just uh, to show a few a few of them then human centered here you can find an icon uh, that means i or me like that uh, and for this concept, as for many others, we decide to use humans. Of course, uh, some ca could say, some people could say that this is not inclusive enough because uh, you could have uh, a tail in which a plant or an animal or an extraterrestrial say, I, and so this is not enough representative. I agree. Uh, but for now, we are focusing uh, to something human-centered. Precise, uh, for example, he, uh, so each icon should have a well-defined meaning as in dictionary. Here, for example, I show the difference between hear and listen. Um, the idea is that listen normally is something that here you can hear something even if you don't want, but in listen normally uh, there is an active uh, process. So we added the hand uh, in order to emphasize this different meaning complete all important meanings should be representable by at least one icon so that people could express themselves as in any language um, i don't know if you want to try to guess the meaning of this icon um, this uh, requested some some time to analyze all the possibilities etc um, the meaning is language. Uh, so we analyzed with, with the linguists and the graphic designers the several possibilities. At the beginning, we don't, didn't have any idea on how uh, we might, uh, what we might do. Uh, but uh, then we, we had the idea to represent separately the spoken language, uh, the written language, and the sign language. And so this is uh, what we have for now. Uncensored, so no ban on vulgar, sexual, explicit, violent, and offensive icons, as in any real language. So bans can be in the forums, uh, not in the language itself. So we don't want an Orwellian newspeak. Consistent, um, this is a bit technical. Um, an iconym is a a part of an icon that has a specific meaning. So if an icon, a certain icon has a certain meaning in an icon, this, the same icon should maintain the same meaning in every icon, ideally. Uh, so here I, I show an example of something less consistent. For example, uh, here you have the same um, trait that represents the seat and the person here. So this might be confusing, for example. And also, uh, this green check means OK. But here, they want to say, avoid peak times. This is for the coronavirus crisis, by the way, <laughs> um, in trains. Uh, so uh, in our opinion, this would be more consistent, because here we show a peak, uh, so a, cro a crowdy train. And so. Uh, in our opinion, it would be more consistent to have a negation in order to, to mean avoid. Transparent. The icons should be as easy as possible to be quickly understandable by most people. Abstraction should be reduced to cases in which there are not other options. Um, one more example, uh, still about trains. 
less transparent and more transparent. So here the meaning is don't cross, don't cross the railway lines. Um, this on the right, in our opinion, is quite uh, good understandable, quite well understandable. Uh, this on the left uh, is less understandable if you don't know the meaning. Um, for example, um, this could be a hug, uh, or in um, in Chinese, the character to say big is exactly mm -hmm. this one because it means this is very big. I, you, I, I, you cannot see me entirely, but uh, so they say uh, the origin of the character means big like that. Okay, so um, so it doesn't mean necessarily stop. Crowd-driven, uh, so tested by the community. Uh, particularly, uh, we have a tool that is called Iconometer that was developed by the University of Geneva. Um, uh, that is particularly Professor Peraya, that's one of our academic references. Um, and so we want to take into account also these suggestions. The Iconometer uh, so is, a, is a software with a methodology that allows to test the icons and their meaning. So, for example, in this case, I said we de developed this icon to say language. And then in the software, uh, we will have uh, testers, people that uh, uh, will uh, volunteer to, 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 give, to, to give some feedback and to do some tests. Uh, and so in the, so in the software, uh, you will read, the tester will read, what does this icon, this icon mean? Distribute 100 points among the following meanings. Then we, you have five possible meanings. Gestures, communication, language, interaction, or speech. And then, of course, if averagely across the testers, uh, language gets 100%, wow, perfect. It's uh, incredibly um, understandable. People, um, even from different cultures, understand well what we meant. Otherwise, we will have to change something. Now let's see some examples of iconic sentences in Econ. I have shown previously uh, these two in the video. So my language limits are my world limits by Ludwig Wittgenstein. And so, and then the, the second sentence is something that we have, uh, let's say we have adapted this initial sentence. Um, and so we said, when your language goes beyond your limits, your world goes beyond your limits. Uh, now, I want you to point out one particular thing. In this icon, uh, you see a blue square. This indicates uh, an adjective. I'm not going here now in the debate uh, what an adjective is. And for example, in Italian, we talk about uh, this is a possessive adjective. And in some cases, possessive pronoun. In other languages, you don't say so. It doesn't matter. Um, but so when needed, uh, adjectives can be indicated by a blue square. In this case, it is needed to differentiate I from my. Then we have developed uh, several sentences for the virus crisis, the coronavirus crisis, with translations in 11 languages. This is one of them. Uh, so stop the uh, so stop the virus. I stay home. Um, you can see here in the stop uh, sorry in the virus icon, we have added uh, this um, yellow triangle that is uh, an international um, uh, symbol for biohazard, so bio biological danger. And then we have specified it with the icon of the virus. Uh, one thing also I wanted to point out, this uh, icon is a contrastive icon. So uh, we wanted to emphasize stay and not go out. Okay. So this is something that we use often to uh, ease the, um, the comprehensibility of the icon. And then uh, one more thing, we have also uh, created some synthetic sentences. Uh, this is not in the core 
goal of the project, but it's something that we find found also interesting to study. So the possibility to join several icons into one. Uh, in this case, you can see that um, in this icon, you have I, stay, and home. Then, of course, we can discuss if uh, maybe the, the seat is not necessary, for example. Uh, okay, we can improve some things. We can discuss on how to improve. But I, would, I just wanted to, to show the concept so that we can also uh, synthesize in, uh, in one icon sometimes. One more example. Uh, I love listen music. Um, we have three versions. Uh, this is in a manga style. Um, so masculine, feminine, and a gender. So we, without, so genderless, let's say. Um, and here also we try to uh, have the, the whole sentence in only one icon. And so you can see in this case that is also I love listen music. So you you write uh, in English in this case your sentence. The system proposes um, possible icons, and then uh, you can translate. So you can have the the iconic translation with a word by word translation. By the way, then you send it into the chat and uh, to the other people to the other person, and that's all. Uh, so just to finish. Uh, Comunicon, our vision, our motto is improving communication through an iconic language. So uh, do you want to iconify your sentences? Do you want to collaborate? As I said, uh, we have and we uh, look for graphic designers, linguists, software developers, marketers, and business strategists. Do you want to know more? Then visit comunico.com. Download our PDF of iconic sentences about the coronavirus, uh, it's free. Um, and contact us at info at communicon.com. Uh, so now I'm going to see some questions. Uh, okay, Georg uh, Yannick asks, uh, the example icons look very detailed. Uh, can they be seen uh, when they are small or what's the minimal font size you are designing for? Um, for now, we are considering a minimum, a minimum size of um, 48 pixel, so square of 48 pixels. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is the, the answer. Uh, of course, uh, yes, in some cases, we will need and we need some details uh, and so we cannot reduce uh, extremely the, the size. Nadu asks, uh, why do some visual symbols become international and others not? How can a visual language become internationally known? Um, so the first question, um, well, there are some factors that uh, allow uh, some symbols to become more internationally uh, known. Uh, in this, so for now, we, we are not really interested in understanding why uh, we just, for each symbol, we just try to understand what exists, uh, what is internationally known, what is more, more internationally known, and so what sh we should uh, take uh, in order to create what we want to create. Uh, how can a visual language become internationally known? Uh, this is... Uh, I, I don't have a an answer for, for that. Um, then... Uh, okay... Okay, again, Nadu, visual images often have multiple ambiguous interpretations. How can you prevent Comunicon from being ambiguous? Uh, so in this case, Econ, because Comunicon is a project, Econ is a language. Uh, how can we prevent Econ from being ambiguous? 
Um, well, uh, we have, I have tried to, to explain it earlier. Uh, I have shown um, the, a slide about uh, hear and listen to, for example. Uh, so the idea is to have um, a dictionary in which you can look up the meanings. Um, and ideally, you can even uh, check in, in real time, uh, hovering the mouse uh, over the, uh, the icon. This is not yet implemented, by the way, uh, but we have already thought about that. Uh, again, Nadu, when uh, do your uh, you do when do you do community community testing of the icons, and how where do you find testers? Uh, we don't have yet a uh, uh, big community. We have uh, some channels on uh, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Uh, we begin to have some fans that follow us, and. Uh, we haven't started the tests yet. We have the, the things in place. And um, as soon as we will have enough uh, energies to do that, we will we'll start also uh, to do um, these tests. Uh, for now, we have, we have done tests, but not in an academic way. Uh, this is what I mean. Uh, so there are some sentences or icons that we have tested uh, more than 100, with more than 100 people, for example. Uh, having very good uh, feedback, uh, seeing that they are well understood, uh, but we don't have data about this, these tests. Uh, so when I, when I talk about tests, I, I mean something academic with the iconometer, uh, then doing a publication, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, excellent question, Chang Wu Yen. How do you deal with personal names, uh, names of places, countries, etc.? Uh, so I'll begin with countries. Countries, we show uh, the shape of the, um, of the country with the flag of the country. And if needed, also the position in the world map. Um, then names of places, uh, we don't have any other choice than uh, uh, show where the place is plus adding the local name. Possibly we might add the IPA uh, pronunciation uh, or some other transliterations. But uh, yeah, and for personal names, it's quite similar. The idea is that each one uh, can have his own avatar, uh, plus if he wants also the name in its own language. So written in, in its own language. Uh, Detlef B. Blanke, I don't know. Um, have you thought about integrated Braille in the icons? Um, no. Uh, Braille is a transliteration system, it's not a language. Uh, it's like whistles, whistled languages. Uh, they are not real languages, they are codes. So, no, uh, but I mean, if you have some proposal, let me know, but I don't see uh, the interest because I, I don't see the, the, the relationship with the meaning. Okay. Uh, where are the grammar and dictionary of econ accessible? Uh, for now, they are not yet accessible. Oh, another interesting question. Kim Lam Nguyen, is there or will there be a simplified version of, of Econ, not Comunicon? Again, Comunicon is a project, Econ is a language uh, that can be quickly drawn by hand. Uh, I would say no, um, because for that, there is already a very good uh, project uh, that exists since the. Um, 40s, 50s, that is bliss symbols. 
Bliss Symbols was conceived by Charles Bliss. Uh, he was a Jew that um, escaped from a concentration camp in uh, Germany. And then uh, they went to, with his wife, they went to China. He, was in, he learned Chinese. He was inspired by Chinese characters. And, um, and then he conceived, uh, he said, wow, Chinese is beautiful, but it's too complicated. So let's try to simplify it. And so he conceived these bliss symbols that is possible to be handwritten. Uh, and uh, it, is, it was used, and it is still uh, used a bit less, in the augment augmentative and alternative communication for people with cerebral palsy and other uh, disabilities. Uh, and so there, are, there is also the International in uh, Bliss Institute in Canada, I think, is the main... Uh, uh, so it's based in Canada, I think. So for handwritten, you have already that. Um, econ, no, is not meant to be handwritten. We want to have certain details that you cannot handwrite. So for now, no. Uh, how are you going to type in econ? Again, econ, not communicon. Um, uh, as I sh have shown in the video, uh, you can uh, type uh, in a language. For now, we have four languages. Uh, so you choose the language, you type in your language, and then the system uh, try to tries to match uh, what he finds in the database, and so proposes to you some possible uh, icons, and then you can choose what you prefer, and then you go on in writing your, your sentence. Bartos, how do you deal with the vocabulary that is intranslatable between the languages? Um, yeah, vocabulary that is intranslatable, I would say as any other uh, planned language. Uh, so you can try to... Um, compose the meanings. I, I haven't talked about it because I, I didn't have time to talk about everything. I just uh, talked about a few things. But in Econ also, you can compose meanings um, as in Esperanto, as in Tokipona, as in uh, uh, Ido and many other planned uh, languages. So uh, yeah, you can, you can basically uh, join some different icons to create new meanings. So I think, yeah, this was the last question I read. So I thank you very much uh, for your attention. And uh, don't forget, go to the, our internet site, get in touch if, you're, if you like the project, just to say hello, or just to ask questions or more. So, Zaijian, la revedere, taleme, hygienete, walete. A presto, eh, gis.